to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have a number of pens that I am going to let go from my collection. Now I have already sold a number of pens uh, in June and people ask me why am I selling these pens, what's wrong with them? Well, simply there's nothing wrong with the pens. The only issue that I have is that uh, I had 170 fountain pens in my collection and I realised that some of these pens I'm just no longer writing with as much as they are nice pens and a few of my pen friends have uh, also been doing pen culls and it's not something that I've really been a fan of doing but I decided you know what I would give it a try and see if some of these pens could go to good homes so I actually have here 17 pens that I uh, am going to sell. So there's 10 here, there's 7 in another pen tray that I'll show you in a little bit as well. So if you're interested in these pens, go to my website at penultimatedave.com. At the top you'll find a link for the for sale page. Treat this video as the video for the pens so that you can see how good the pen looks, the quality of the pen, the nib, and also the writing experience as well. And then send me a message if you are interested in any of these pens, and maybe uh, I can rehome the pen to you. So I think we'll go through the pens left to right. So we have a Pelican. M800 and this is a Renaissance Brown and this really is a stunning material uh, it's a pen that I bought when it first came out it was a bit of an impulse buy I wasn't really a fan of the Pelican striped versions and I liked this quite a lot so this was a pen that I bought but I very quickly after this bought uh, another one which was a Grand Place. So this one really unfortunately has just not been used as much. So I actually have this with a 18 cat gold broad nib. I do also have a medium nib that I can swap the nib out for if that's what you would prefer instead of the broad nib. But these nibs are very nice they write nice they are certainly the m800 nibs are more on the firmer side compared to the m1000 nibs uh, but you can see here in terms of posting the cap you can post the cap as well it's a piston filling mechanism as well and as i mentioned i will go into a writing sample once we've gone through all of these pens and then you'll be able to see this but in terms of the nib that is the nib you can see there there's no issues with the nib whatsoever and then you have the, the plastic ABS feed on there but this is really a, a nice pen but as I mentioned it's just a pen that I do not write with a lot so unfortunately I've decided to, to let that pen go for my collection and then we have this Leonardo and it's the Officina Italiana and it's the Positano uh, blue resin and again, this is quite a striking material. Um, with Leonardo's, you do sometimes get a slight difference in colour between the caps and the bodies, and, and there is on this one. Um, but you can see it's very much like an oil painting there, that this really is nice. Now, this was the pen that I got originally, along with the horn version, which I have since sold. This is a lovely size pen you can also post the cap uh, it's a cartridge converter pen and you can also if you want to access the cartridge converter knob through this as well now this is a steel nib it's a broad nib so uh, for me, like this one writes really well. It's not the original nib that I had on my original unboxing video. S uh, Salvatore from Leonardo sent me some replacement nibs. These do not have baby's bottom on them and they do write very, very well. So that's the Leonardo Officina Italiana Positano Blue. And then I have an Edison Collier, and this is the Persimmon Swirl. And this is a beautiful material, and 
I, again, I do like that material. I love that Chateauens, but And I love the size of the pen. It's just a pen that I just don't write with. Uh, I have other pens that I tend to grab more quickly. So this one has a broad Edison nib. It's a Yovo nib. And I do have a 1.5mm stub that I can put on there as well. It's a cartridge converter pen. Uh, you cannot post the cap, it just won't sit on there, it's not designed to, but you can see in the size of my hand, this is actually quite a nice pen. And again, absolutely nothing wrong with any of these pens, it's just that I have other pens in my collection that I use more, and I'm also looking to make way so that I can buy some new pens and add them to my collection that I will write with more as well. And then we have this Edison Collier, and this is the blue steel version. And you can see here this material is quite stunning. Uh, it is quite a dark material, and you do find sometimes that it looks more black than blue in areas. But then that chatoyance just kicks in, and you really see that material pop. So again, this is a cartridge converter pen. This one does have a 1.5mm stub on it. Um, I could, if the broad nib on the other one hasn't sold, I could swap the broad nib over, but it would be a two-tone gold nib instead of this rhodium or steel-coloured nib, silver nib. So it would be a two-tone nib if you wanted that. But again, it's a cartridge converter. You cannot post this. It won't, will not post, but you don't need to that the size in the hand is quite good and these Edisons are really nice writers and they have Yo Yovo nibs and Yovo nibs I always find are really good and then there's this Edison Perlette and this is the Lapis Flake or Lapis Blue and again this is a really really stunning material uh, and I bought this really on a whim uh, this really was a material that I loved uh, I wasn't so sure about the size of the pen. I'm not that enamoured with small size pens. And I'll show you here that this pen is quite small. It's about 120 millimetres long. So it is quite small, but it still fits in my hand. I find the section on the little small side for me. Uh, I can post the cap, and I normally do with this pen when I do write with it. Uh, in terms of the nib, you can see there it's a uh, steel medium Edison nib and again it's a Yovo nib but again that writes quite nicely so that's the Edison Perlet and then I have uh, a pen that I acquired early on in my collection and this is the Conklin I always hate that they put it the name this way around on the cap but it's a Conklin Nighthawk and this was the Goulet Pens exclusive long sold out I have a couple of these so I'm going to sell one of these off uh, the the clip is spring mounted there uh, it's made of a carbon fiber weave material and it really is quite nice it's a very stealth looking pen and I bought it because very early on I was into this sort of stealth looking pen uh, look so there you have it it's in the size of my hand and you can see it posted it posts quite well it's a cartridge converter it has a black section here and it also has a black yovo nib and this is a medium nib but again yovo nibs write very very well so for me uh, again this is a good all-round writer but it's just one of these pens that I don't write with enough. I, I should do, and I try to rotate my pens as much as I can. But there are just some pens that you just gravitate more towards, especially when you have a, sort of 170 pens. Now, a couple of other pens here are these Penida La Grande Belletzas. And I do like these. It has a quill clip there. These are magnetic um, caps, so they just pull straight off. Um, you can see in the size of my hand it's actually quite a good size you can post the cap it will rotate a bit but uh, it will post 
And then it has one of these lovely 14 cat medium quill nibs. And these are really nice nibs. Um, but again, it's just one of these pens that I was writing with a lot, but then I started writing with my Scribos more. And again, this is a cartridge converter pen. And you can see there the magnet, it will just lock into place. So that's the Malachite version of the Penida La Grande Belletta. And then I have the Road Light version as well that I'm looking to rehome. And this is, again, another stunning material. Uh, a little bit more darker though. You don't quite see as much of the sort of oily pattern in it because it's a red, more of a, like a, a red and a copper brown sort of mix. And you have got the Penida logo there. Again, it's a magnetic clasp so you just pull the cap off again in the size of my hand and you can also see there the cap is posted now this does have another 14 karat gold nib but this is a broad nib and this is a quill nib so you see those cutouts there and that helps it flex a little bit more and again a good writer and it's just unfortunately one of those pens that I don't pick up a lot to write with. And then we have this Visconti, and this is a, uh, technically it's a Rembrandt, it's the Visconti Merry-Go-Round. And it's a beautiful pen, but again, it's just, I, I don't, this is the only Rembrandt I have. I had a couple of Van Goghs, and I sold both Van Goghs, and I'm looking ultimately to sell this. It's a magnetic clasp like the Penidas, and you can post the cap as well. And this comes with a number five Visconti steel nib, and it's a broad nib. It's a cartridge converter, but again, this, this material is quite stunning that you can see there. Beautiful, beautiful material. So, again, it's just one of these pens that I just don't write with enough. I should do, and I really should do. But I just have too many pens. And this is one of the problems when, when you are collecting. Um, and then I have this Visconti. And this is the Visconti Opera True Black. Uh, it's the Opera Metal version, True Black. And it's quite a nice pen. You'll see there the, the True Black logo. You'll see the Visconti bridge clip. And it's springy. Um, you'll see the Visconti finial there. Uh, it's a metal pen, hence the name Opera Metal. It has a hook safe lock mechanism. Now this comes with a chromium 18 nib. Now, so th this is a uh, broad nib. Um, it's effectively a steel nib with chrome inside it. Uh, you'll notice that these chromium nibs have a slight sort of turn up on the nib there. So the tipping tends to be more on the top than the bottom. Uh, it's not a food a nib, the nib's not been bent, but this is how the chromium 18 nibs come. And this writes very wet, and you'll see that in the writing example as well. But uh, for me, this is, again, a, a lovely writer. So I think let's show the remaining pens. So... We have here another seven pens that I'm looking to rehome. So we have this Visconti Millennium Arc, and this is the Moonlight Burgundy. And you'll see here it has a lovely springy clip. Now, this is a sack filler, it's a uh, what they call an arc filler from Visconti, which is basically the same as the um, Conklin Crescent filler, really. Uh, but you can see here this material is quite stunning there. And you have this safety ring here that stops you depressing this arc uh, because it locks in place. And then you have this little sort of like hole here and you rotate that round so that you can then depress it and then ink up or let the ink out of the pen. So this is the burgundy version and you can see it in my hand here. You can post the cap if you like to do so. And again, this has a chromium 18 nib on it. And you'll see here the 
limited edition number of the pen engraved out on the section and then you'll see there the nib and that is a broad nib there so this is uh, quite a nice writing pen but again nothing wrong with it now in terms of lining these arcs up you have to do a 180 and then screw it in to have that line up with the clip that's how Visconti have uh, aligned these clips with the arcs then I have this lovely Visconti and again this is a Millennium Arc it's a Moonlight Typhoon or Typhoon Blue and you can see there this blue is actually quite captivating there it's uh, again a, a little bit like an oil painting uh, again you have this arc filler here and then at the bottom here you have that little gap where you rotate it and then you can press the arc filler in and out to either suck up ink or expel ink and clean it out in terms of the the pen like this is the pen in my hand and this is it posted and you'll see here if I zoom in that's the limited edition number of the pen and again it has a chromium 18 nib and these nibs have a little bit of a turn up on them uh, and this is a medium nib so again another pen that I'm looking to sell and rehome and again to line up the arc with the clip you just rotate 180 degrees and then screw it on and then we have this lovely Visconti and this is the Davina Elegance and this is in the brown finish and this really has quite a lot of chatoyance but it is also quite dark but you'll see there some of that chatoyance going on uh, you have these silver rods that are twisted around the Davina body uh, and it really actually makes it quite nice it's a captured converter so you pull out this knob and then you twist it to fill and unfill and then in terms of the size of the pen I'll show you it's actually quite a long pen in in my hand you can't really you can post the cap if you really wanted to there you go right. it will go on but it's quite a long pen at that point so it's not something that I normally would do but if you're a cap poster then you may want to do that now this is a 23 cap palladium medium nib you can see there if I zoom in a bit more and again it writes very nicely so I, I just basically have uh, the reason why I'm getting rid of this is I have a number of other Davinas I have the smaller Davina Metropolitan in the MIDI um, in the stack celluloid I also have uh, three other Davinas in this size I have the Desert Spring the Elegance Green and the Typhoon Blue uh, and I tend to use those a little bit more so uh, this is one I'm gonna let go of then I have the Visconti race tech and this really has a bit of a a racing bike or, or motorsports theme to it like you have the Visconti clip here is done in like a brake disc with these holes in it you have a checkered flag here you also have carbon fiber weave going on there on the body um, it's a screw cap and you can post the cap if you want to it doesn't post deeply now it does have a again a chromium 18 smart touch nib it is an extra fine nib now the only this is a cartridge converter the only thing that is wrong with this pen is that you can see there that this checkered flag unfortunately does stain a little bit so I have had this inked up with a red ink and the white areas have stained to a little bit more of a, a pinkish color but that's the only issue with this pen and I have discounted that accordingly but you can see it's actually quite a nice pen with a carbon fiber weave and then there's this Visconti Homo Sapiens Elegance and this is not the lava edition this is a resin edition and you will see here that it's a standard Homo Sapiens it has a Visconti bridge clip it's laser etched 
you have the Visconti Homo Sapiens band here. Again, laser etched. And it's a black pen, it's a resin pen, has a hook safe lock. And the pen is actually quite a good size in my hand. And you can see there that posting the cap works well. Now, this is a 23 cap palladium medium nib. And that again writes very, very well. And you have the hook safe lock mechanism there that you can see. Now, this is a cartridge converter, so it's not the power vac or the piston, um, but this does actually make it a little bit lighter. So if you're not into power vacs or, or piston mechanisms then, and you prefer cartridge converters, then this works quite well. And then I have this Visconti, and it's an opera, and it's a silver dust. And I have a review of this on my uh, YouTube channel, and you can see it there. It's a little bit of water remnants in the barrel here. Uh, it's always very difficult to actually clean these out and get them to dry. So there's a little bit of ink uh, resi water re residue there. Uh, but this is a very nice pen. Uh, it's a hook safe lock mechanism here it's a double reservoir and these come with two different nibs they come with a chromium 18 or the 23 cap palladium nib which is the more expensive version so this is a 23 cap palladium nib and it's a 1.3 millimeter stub nib from visconti there but you can see it's actually quite a nice nib uh, there you go so this really is a nice pen and it has this lovely sort of silver dust going in it there in the swirls a little bit like some of the homo sapien ribbon pens uh, and it's a pen that I do like a lot but I just don't write with so it's one of those that I decided that if somebody wants to buy it I will let it go from my collection and then I have this Aurora 88, and this is the Aurora 88 Large. Uh, very plain black pen, and I don't normally do plain black pens. But you can see here the, the Aurora there on the, the band. Uh, the clip, it's a ball clip. Now, this is a piston filling pen, and I'll show you here. So it does have an ink window in there as well. In the size of my hand, it's actually quite a good size. You can post the cap and it caps quite deeply. And then it has this very long sweeping tines, very sort of narrow tines here that you can see. Uh, and this is a lovely nib. Now, Aurora didn't actually put a designation on this. It has an Evernight feed. I believe that this is a medium, but it sort of may be a fine nib as well. I'm not too sure on that one, but it's a really, really nice writing nib. But I just don't do black pens, and so this is another pen that I am unfortunately looking to let go in my collection. So I think with that, let's do a writing sample of each of these pens. So we have the, let me zoom in a bit a Pelican M800 Renaissance Brown so this is the Pelican M800 Renaissance Brown and then the nib is an 18 carat gold and this is a broad nib but I can put in here a medium nib if you want it. I then have this, and it is the Leonardo. Let's do a Leonardo. And it's the um, Offachina. That was me just misaligning and it's the uh, Momento Zero but it's the Positano uh, Blue and it's a steel and it's a broad nib 
but you can see there is no baby's bottom or anything on that one and then we have the Edison Collier so Edison Collier and it's the persimmon swirl and again it's a steel nib and it is a broad nib but I can also get a 1.5 stub on there but it would be a uh, steel coloured nib and not a two tone nib and here is again the other Edison and this is the Edison Collier and this is the blue steel and it's a steel and it's a 1.5 millimeter stub nib and then we have the Edison again but this is the Perlette and uh, it's the uh, lapis flake or blue and it is a steel and it is a uh, medium nib and then we have the Conklin Nighthawk so this is the Conklin Nighthawk Goulet and uh, again this is a steel nib uh, but it's a medium nib you can see just how well that writes and then we have this Penida and this is the Penida La Grande Beletza and it's the Malachite version and this is a 14 carat gold and it's a medium nib but you can see here in terms of uh, line variation you can push that nib quite a lot and we have its sibling again another Penida La Grande Belletza and this is a much broader nib and it's the Rodolite nib uh, but it is uh, the um, again 14 carat gold but it's a broad nib but again a very very wet nib there and then we have this which is the Visconti and this is the write this down Visconti merry go round and this is a steel nib and it is a broad nib and but it's also a number five nib um i should probably also actually make a note that the Edison Perlette uh, is also a number five nib. Everything else is a number six nib. And then we have uh, this Visconti here. This is the Visconti Opera Metal. And uh, it's the True Black. True Black and uh, it's a chromium 18 nib and it's a broad nib and then we have the Visconti Millennium Arc Visconti Millennium Arc and this is the burgundy version of the Moonlight and again this is a chromium 
18 nib and it is a broad nib just double checking yes it's a broad nib and then we have again the other Visconti Millennium Arc so this is the Visconti Millennium Arc and this is the Typhoon blue version of the Moonlight and again it's a Chromium 18 nib and it is a medium nib and then we have the Visconti Divina and Visconti Divina and this is the Elegance in the brown and it's a 23 carat palladium and it's a medium nib and we have the Visconti race tech this is a it's a H not a K and uh, this is a uh, chromium 18 and it is an extra fine nib and then we have this Visconti Elegance Visconti let's see Homo Sapiens and it's the Elegance and it's a 23 carat palladium medium nib and then we have the Visconti Opera Silver Dust so this is the Visconti Opera Silver Dust and it's a 23 carat palladium and it's a 1.3 millimeter stub nib and then last but not least we have the Aurora 88 and this is a large and this is an lovely 14 carat medium and I believe it's a medium nib so we'll just run through those pens one by one again. We have the Pelican M800 Renaissance Brown. We have the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero in the Positano Blue. We have the Edison Collier Persimmon Swirl. The Edison Collier Blue Steel. The Edison Perlet Lapis Flake. The Conklin Nighthawk Goulet Edition. The Penida La Grande Bellezza in the Malachite. The Penida La Grande Bellezza in the Rhodolite, the Visconti Merry-Go-Round, the Visconti Opera Metal, and this is the True Black, sometimes called the Total Black, but it's actually True Black engraved on the pen. The Visconti Millennium Arc, uh, the Moonlight Burgundy, the Visconti Millennium Arc in the Moonlight Typhoon Blue, the Visconti Divina Elegance in the Brown, the Visconti Race Tech, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Elegance, we have the Visconti Opera Silver Dust, and the Aurora 88 Large. So those are the pens that I'm currently selling. If you are interested in these pens, then definitely head over to my website at penultimatedave.com. You'll see an email me link against each pen. You can email me, uh, see if the pen is still available. Uh, I will try and mark as quickly as possible any of the pens that have sold as sold so that uh, you will know immediately if uh, they are available or not. But drop me a message and let me know if you're interested in any of these pens. And uh, if you are and I can rehome them to you, then I will send them off as soon as possible. So thanks for watching this video. 
please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.